better and happier place. Her marriage to Philip Mountbatten, an anglicized member of the deposed Greek royal family, gave a war-weary country something to celebrate. And the children the marriage produced, first Charles and then Anne, secured the future. Elizabeth's coronation in 1953 was the first ever to be televised. Its combination of ancient ceremony and glittering glamour cemented her as the personification of Britain's post-war rebirth. And it began a reign with a singular purpose. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Elizabeth's reign would be the longest ever in a royal bloodline that goes back over a thousand years. But the royal ride was sometimes bumpy. The stability and continuity the monarchy was supposed to provide began to look shaky as one by one the royal marriages broke down around her, her sister Margaret's, her daughter Anne's, her son Andrew's. They all ended in awkward divorces. None was uglier than the breakup of Prince Charles and Diana Spencer. The long public unraveling of the marriage of the heir to the throne seemed to shake the very foundations of the royal household. When, in the early 1990s, Windsor Castle also went up in flames, the Queen's famous stoicism was tested. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> in the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. However horrible the year, the Windsor Castle fire and the public complaints over the skyrocketing repair costs produced a turning point in royal history. Monarchs normally collect taxes, but from then on, the Queen agreed to pay taxes on her income. Royal behavior was also changed by the shocking death of Diana in that Paris car crash. The national outpouring of grief seemed to highlight the emotional gap between the Queen and her people. Elizabeth did much to repair the damage with a single bow of the head to the passing coffin of a popular princess. No one who knew Diana will ever forget her. Millions of others who never met her, but felt they knew her, will remember her. There would be other challenges, one of the most serious centering around the wife of one of Diana's sons. When Prince Harry's biracial American wife, Meghan Markle, complained of mistreatment by palace officials, the couple renounced the royal life and moved to California. When Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip, who she had described as her strength, died, she was left alone to face the last chapter of her reign. Over seven decades on the throne, Elizabeth redefined the monarchy, remade it for a more modern, less deferential age. And in the process, she became not just Queen of Great Britain, she became, in a way, Queen of the World. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London. And a remarkable life and legacy we want to show you now. Live pictures from Buckingham Palace, where they have just posted the notice of Her Majesty's passing. Out front, where their crowds have gathered there. Holly Williams is there outside Buckingham Palace. and. Holly, there have been signs that her health was failing in recent days. That's correct, Nora. I mean, she's been in, in poor health for months now, experiencing mobility issues. Um, we've frequently seen her using a, a walking stick. She's missed some very important events because of her health, including some of the events uh, at her Platinum Jubilee, uh, which was celebrated this past summer. And then this week, uh, the UK has a new Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister has to meet the Queen. Typically that happens here in London at Buckingham Palace, but uh, it was unprecedented this time. The new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, travelled around 500 miles to Scotland to meet the Queen. And those, I, I believe, uh, the final images um, that we have of the Queen appearing uh, in public, uh, looking very elderly uh, and, and very frail. I think it's impossible to overstate the extent to which this is the end of an era. Um, she was a, a tiny woman in physical stature, but she was a giant, a towering figure in this country. She ascended the throne when she was a fresh-faced young mother. Uh, she is leaving it a, a great grandmother. When she ascended the throne, Winston Churchill 
was the Prime Minister in this country uh, and British people were enduring austerity uh, following World War II. It is now uh, a modern multicultural society. I think uh, Queen Elizabeth II's trademarks are known not just here in this country but around the world. She was known for her big hats, uh, for, her, for her love of bright colours, uh, for her love of sensible shoes and for her beloved corgi dog. She was always uh, seemingly surrounded by a swarm of them. Then we can expect a, a period uh, of several days of national mourning uh, in this country. Her successor, as you mentioned, is Charles, her eldest son. Um, as I said, this really is the end of an era. And to give you an indication of that, for more than 70 years, the national anthem of this country has been God Save the Queen. It will now become God Save the King. Wow, Holly Morrill, Holly Williams, thank you, yes. And um, the Queen was born April 21st, 1926. That year was also the first public demonstration of a true TV, just to give you a sense. And as you mentioned, of course, that la those last pictures that we saw of Her Majesty at Balmoral was when she was welcoming the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Um, she has reigned and uh, worked with 15 prime ministers during her time, and uh, the first being Winston Churchill. Um, we're going to be talking about her legacy, her life, um, for a while now this afternoon and for the next many days of mourning. And Holly, I just must ask you, since you're there, tell us about the mood, the people that have gathered. Yeah, it's very interesting, Nora. So the, the, the news that she was in quite poor health uh, and the atmospherics were not good came at around noon local time. Uh, and we began to see people gather here outside the gates of Buckingham Palace. We're trying to give you a, a shot of that now. Several hundred people at least. Um, uh, this, is not, this is not normal. These people are gathering because of the news. And let's see what happens in the hours to come if we see a, a, a larger outpouring of grief uh, for this uh, much-loved monarch. Um, let me tell you about what we think will happen in the days to come. We understand uh, that Queen Elizabeth's remains will come here to Buckingham Palace, uh, her London home. We understand that uh, she will lie in state at Westminster Palace, just down the road from here. That is the home of, of the British Parliament. Um, we understand that her funeral will be held at Westminster Abbey, also very close to where, where we're standing right now. And we understand that she will finally be laid to rest at Windsor Castle, which is just outside of London. If you cast your mind back, you remember that's where her husband, Prince Philip, uh, was buried last year. Well, the, the Queen's place in history begins with her being the head of the Commonwealth and how she helped to steer uh, Great Britain's new role in the world after World War II. Uh, the Commonwealth is still doing very well. She's still the head of state of 14 countries. There's still over 50 countries part of the Commonwealth. And she saw that very much uh, as, as part of her most important duty. When she was 21, she gave a speech in which she said, the motto of my ancestors is I serve. And that, that was the, the guiding motto for her entire life. So that's her first legacy. The second, actually, is a legacy of feminism. Now, she herself would never have used that word. Nevertheless, as, as a woman who carried on working, who aged until the age of 96, but showed that she was always relevant, uh, she is the original woman who nevertheless persisted. So these two things, how to be a woman, how to be a woman in charge, how to be uh, the CEO of the firm, as the royal family was often called in, in, in jest, uh, set an example for women around the world. And it was one of the reasons why she was so beloved. She also utilized the, the power of soft power incredibly well. And her legacy uh, for future leaders, as well as the royal family, is how she was able to use her influence in a way that never seemed to be actually using her influence. That was extremely important. The relationship between the US and the UK has never been better, and that is very much part of her legacy. She visited America over four times, and each of those royal visits were a roaring success. If you look at, uh, for example, her visit in 1976 to celebrate the bicentennial, she danced with President Ford at the White House. And there was so much jollity at the occasion that when she went onto the dance floor, the band played The Lady is a Tramp. And uh, that was seen as, as a, a, a mark of affection for her, the, the queen who could uh, do such um, amazing things with grace and also humor. So her relationship with the U.S., with, with Americans, has been one of, the, the, one of her greatest legacies that she, she leaves, a relationship that is in robust health between the two countries. And her relationship with the Obama, was, the Obama family was in particularly, in particular, very, um, 
very warm. Uh, there were three visits between them, and uh, each time you could see that the warmth uh, between the two w was growing. And so it's an extraordinary thing that a woman who was able to transcend so many generations and to carry such the, the age of wisdom and experience with her was nevertheless able herself to keep on modernizing and changing uh, as the times went on. Royal website uh, announcing the news um, just about a half an hour ago in which they noted that she died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. And in that statement, it said, the king and the queen consort will remain there through this evening and will return to London tomorrow, already declaring that Prince Charles is now the king of England, what they call the continuity of the monarchy and the coronation of the new king. Holly Williams is outside Puckingham Palace and Holly, um, Prince Charles is now king. What comes next? That's correct, Nora. Well, we're not expecting his coronation uh, for several months to come. I think it's a colossal understatement to say that Queen Elizabeth II will be a very hard act to follow for her son. Uh, she had the kind of popularity that politicians can only dream of. Uh, some would argue that she was almost single-handedly responsible for shoring up support for the monarchy as an institution in this country, not because of what she said. Um, she was a woman of very few words. She didn't say very much, but because of what she did, you know, she was widely regarded as quiet, reliable, steadfast, and a true servant of of her people. She was loved by many people in this country, but just as importantly, she was respected by many people who are not fervent monarchists. And, and there are many of those people in this country. Uh, Charles uh, and his wife Camilla are both uh, much less popular. Charles has uh, from time to time been criticized for seeming to take uh, political positions on various issues. He's already uh, well into his 70s. He's been waiting to take over this job essentially his whole life. But, but let's see how, how he does. Let's see perhaps how he changes, how Camilla changes when they step into these new roles. They have already stepped into them as king and queen consort.